We'll be reviewing the Ohuhu 120 brush and chisel tip markers. Now, let's take a look at it. Inside, we have 120 unique colors, plus one color splendor. And as you can see, one side is brush, and the other side is a chisel tip. You can tell that one side's brush by looking at this gray line. There's also a label that says this side is brush and this side's broad. So let's test out one of these markers. I'm gonna push this out of the way. And bring out our paper. Make sure that whenever you're using Ohuhu's or any alcohol markers, I guess, in general, make sure you use some thick paper. And right now, I'm using some cardstock. Regular printer paper, paper well, um, Ohuhu markers will technically bleed through it. And the color also changes. And the ink spreads. So it doesn't stay in that one line you put it in. Especially when you're layering. Especially, like when you're layering, um, the paper sometimes will break which is not good. So make sure you use thick paper. So as you can see, you can make thin lines with it, the brush side, and you can also make thick lines depending on how much pressure you apply. It's also good for calligraphy if you're into it. And on this side, we have the chisel tip. And this also makes thick lines and thin lines, and I guess a mix of both. As you can see from these, just these two sides, you can make a variety of brush, stroke, brush strokes. So which side is better for blending? I would say that the brush side is better for blending. When you're blending with the broad tip or chisel tip, Sometimes it tends to like get kind of streaky and that's why I love to use the brush tip for a lot of stuff because it has a thin line, thin um, tip, which I can use for filling in small spaces. Now let's try blending. So over here, I've got these two colors. They're pretty similar, but they're different. So I have these two open, and one um, trick you can do with these markers is place the cap on the other side. So you can um, keep track of it and make sure you don't lose it. So I'm going to start out with applying my colors to the paper. And basically what I'm going to do is um, see which color is lighter. And I think that's the bottom color, which is BG68 turquoise blue. L color is pastel blue or PB7. So now I'm going to try blending it by sort of keep making strokes um, on the blue until it starts to kind of mix in with the color. And as you can see that makes a beautiful blend. Another reason why I love these Markers is because they're so good at blending. I mean, they're like way better than Crayola markers. So I that's one that's one of the markers I have, and this is better than that. Um, one thing though is that the brush tip sometimes can get frayed when you're using a lot. So who makes the brush tips like um, flippable, so you can pull it out and then flip it back in with a brand new nib on the other side. There are lots of colors. Some are pastel, some are darker, but most of them are on the darker side. So now that I've reviewed this, 
let's do a color swatch. But before we get into the color swatch, I actually wanted to show you this pocket. Um, in the bag. Well, I've already done a swatch, but I want to do a swatch on the paper I'm using because sometimes different papers can influence how the color looks like. So you want to make sure that the color you're using is, um, what do I have to do this? Um, want to make sure the color you're using is what the color you want by checking it out on the piece of paper to see if it's the right color. And as you can see, I haven't finished it yet, um, this, these swatches. I haven't got to the grays, but I'll do that later. Another thing that comes in the pocket is this small pamphlet. And it shows you what colors there are for both sides. And a wheel, a color wheel showing um, the difference in colors. It shows you the 120, 75, 72, and 48 pack. Here it gives you some information on the series ink and a bunch of other stuff for the markers and on the back side this reversible brush tip instructions and this is my one of my favorite parts is that these little chat bubbles that show you that how good um customer service is at ohuhu like over here it says that i got a dried pen upon arrival that's what happened to me and a free replacement is on its way to you and um, they give us a free replacement, so I know this is true. And here's some blending tutorials. And yeah. Um, there's also supposed to be a plastic sheet that protects the... Oh wait, found it. <laughs> this, this is like a plastic sheet that protects the um, ink from bleeding through. So basically what you do is you put it under your paper. So when the bleed... When the ink bleeds through, instead of ruining your surface, it ruins the um, plastic sheet. But the good thing is, um, you can keep reusing this, and it helps protect your surface. It says right over here that if you are coloring on thin paper, please put this pad between your coloring sheets to prevent any bleed through. So that's nice. Oh, -hoo -hoo. markers are honestly a great way for um, beginners who want to, you know, like start to um, use alcohol markers and brush markers. And literally, they have like a lot of markers. Um, they also have water-based markers. So, oh, -hoo -hoo is a great way to learn using these supplies. And they're pretty cheap compared to things like Copics. And yeah. So now that we've done this, let's get into the color swatching. So now I'm moving on to the color swatching. Um, I just want to apologize though because uh, I ended up recording sideways. So when I came into my editing app, um, I tried to rotate it. It turns out that the whole top and bottom is cut out. So you can't see a lot of the color swatches, but um, I'll show it later. So I hope that's okay. But anyway, I'm swatching out the reds, browns, and yellows. You can't see them, but I put a lot of yellows above. If you can see Y9, uh, Y1 to Y8 is mostly yellows. So yeah. Now I think I'm moving on to um, what it seems like pinks. And... I honestly think that R18, R19, and R20 are like some of the best um, light colors, light skin colors that I like to use. Because I like to use R20 as blush and R19 as a shadow for the base color, which is R18. So now I'm moving on to the blues. And I like PB7. It's like a bluish color. I think it's called pastel blue. And honestly, I love it since my blue is my favorite color and i love how deep and vibrant some of them are some of them are more pastel colors but all of them look super vibrant to me and now i think i'm moving on to some greens i think yeah and i honestly love bg68 too and i think that's like a turquoise color and turquoise is also one of my favorite colors because green and blue mixed up 
it makes kind of like a turquoise color i guess and i just love it i think it's also teal but um teal tends to be a little darker i think i mean there's like a teal marker in the hoof set and i think it's pretty dull though compared to the others so yeah and now i'm just moving on to the grays and the blacks and there tends to be a lot of these colors i think because like you can use them over the other colors or under the other colors to create like a less um vibrant tone and that's where the grays and blacks come handy so yeah now i'm moving on and i'm done So now that we finished the color swatches, I just want to say that these colors are awesome. I mean, look at these. Some of them are pretty similar, like R2 to R6 are really similar. Um, you could actually barely tell the difference, but they're, um, it's good to have similar colors, at least when you want to have a larger color palette, which is why well, I think it's good. It's also the zero I put over here that's supposed to be the color of Splendor. I actually did put on the paper, but you can't see it. Like when it when you first start, when it's like when the ink is on the paper, it looks like a light gray, sort of like this. But when it dries out, it's just like transparent. And yeah. Um I wanted to say that my favorite color, honestly, on here is um this turquoise -y color <laughs> and the pastel blue. And these two colors are just awesome. I mean, I always like blue colors. And they're amazing. So, yeah. I also um, managed to um, make some digital line art to make, like, a coloring sheet. Which I'm going to color using the hoo-hoos to show um, like I said before. Like in so, sorry so um, for the top and bottom being cropped off. Um... I put a lot of work into the details above and below because they're still her feet, right? And um, she had a bow on top of her head. And honestly, it would be so much better if I could include that. But um, I'm so sorry that this was cropped out. So, yeah. Here, I'm just adding some blush. I like to use R20 as blush and a base color of R. 18 and yeah i like to use r19 as some shading and i just love how vibrant the colors are um like as you can see when it when it's still wet when the ink is still wet it turns out it's like really less vibrant and i forgot the word that he used for like um how vibrant it is or not but anyway when it dries up it turns out way better so here i am i'm using some blues and some teal colors and i'm like to um blend it together and honestly i just love how like in the time lapse it looks so cool when it's blending it just looks really nice and as you can see i'm finishing up the skirt I was actually thinking about adding some detail to the skirt, but I don't want to ruin it, so I just let it be. And I'm filling out the part under the skirt. And now I'm actually working on the bow. Um, so sorry again that you couldn't see it. Um, I really wish I could include it, but <laughs> it just happened um, to be cut out. So here I am. I'm just like putting a base color of Y1 as um uh, like a blondish color and now i'm just slowly add building up some layers of darker yellows and like they're turning out to be a little bit more brown too more like a sunflower color and i'm just keep laying it to get some detail and you know making some strands and stuff and yeah um now i'm working on the shirt i'm adding some purple and this is pastel violet but when you first place down the violet, it looks more vibrant and more pinkish, I guess. Um, it looks better that way. But when it dries, it turns out to be less vibrant. And um, honestly, I don't like it that much. But it looks pretty good compared um, with compared with the blue. Um, 
yeah, this part I'm actually um really sad about, I guess. Um, I don't think the black was a good color choice. I think it would have been better with a little bit of white. Um, sadly, uh, I could not change this. So, <laughs> yeah. I would have just left it white if I had the chance to, like, go back. Um, I just wanted to add some more light to the pants because... You couldn't see the lines, so I added some of that colorless blender to get rid of the ink and became lighter and more like a gray color. And I liked it that way. And now I'm filling in the eyes and I'm just adding a base color, then some dots and some shadows from the top. And now I'm just adding some blue to make it make the sign a little bit more plain. And um, I just realized this too. Above her head, there's like a sign that says 300, and it says also it also says thank you in the drawing because I just want to say thank you for 300 subscribers and um, could have done this without you guys. You guys are literally the best. Um, thanks for supporting me, and I wouldn't have done like these videos without you guys. So yeah, thanks. And now I'm just adding some details with the white gel pens and some white acrylic paint pens and some silver acrylic paint, acrylic paint pens. Um, I just made that little uh, part silver. So yeah, bye. So now that we've completed this coloring sheet, which I made, and the swatches, we can see how they're um, used. And honestly, I would think that I would give this, these markers, um, a five stars. Because honestly, they're pretty good. They're cheap. They're, um, that's like a really large color palette. And I just love them. They're super easy to blend. There's some downsides though. Like I said that the tip can fray and... Sometimes the pens can dry out and they don't have any replacement um, pens. You have to like buy a whole set when you're done. It like runs out, which can be sort of like um, a con, but it's okay, I guess, because like the same thing goes for a lot of art supplies. You can't have them forever. And yeah, this set is awesome. I just wanted to say that. And now that we're done, Let's, I just want to say goodbye and see you next time on Bob's Art World.